Phil Spector was best known for writing several number one hit songs and for being convicted of the murder of Lana Clarkson. Phil Spector got his first hit song while still in high school with a group called the Teddy Bears. Spector went on to write and produce multiple number one songs in the United States and the United Kingdom, also developing the wall of sound technique. In 2009, Spector was convicted of the murder of Lana Clarkson and received a 19-year prison sentence. Phil Spector, in full Harvey Phillips Spector, born December 26, 1940, New York City, New York, U.S., died January 16, 2021, California, American record producer of the 1960s described by the writer Tom Wolfe as the first tycoon of teen. There had been producers since the beginning of the record industry, but none had assumed the degree of control demanded by Spectre. When Spectre was nine years old, his father committed suicide. His grieving family moved to Los Angeles in 1953. Spectre attended Fairfax High School, where he learned how to play the guitar and started writing songs. During his time at Fairfax, he met fellow students Marshall Lebb, Harvey Goldstein, and Annette Kleenbart. Together, they formed the music group The Teddy Bears and had a number one hit in the United States and the United Kingdom with To Know Him Is To Love Him. The title of the song was taken from the inscription on Spectre's father's grave. The Teddy Bears seemed destined for fame, but their next single, I Don't Need You Anymore, only reached number 91 on the charts. Preceding singles proved to be even less successful, and the band split up in 1959. After the group went their separate ways, Spectre drifted around a little, then returned to Los Angeles and re-entered the record business to concentrate on producing. With the help of independent producers Lester Sill and Lee Hazelwood, Spectre went to New York and worked with hitmakers Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller. He became a staff producer for Dune Records, where he produced a string of hits and became an industry sensation. In 1961, Spectre and Still formed their own label, Phyllis Records. The partner signed on the group The Crystals, whose first single, There's No Other Like My Baby, made it to number 20 on the Billboard chart. Their next release, Uptown, hit number 13. By the age of 21, Spectre was a millionaire who was responsible for producing 20 consecutive smash hits. During this time, he started to work on his wall of sound technique in earnest. The wall approach to production involved a process of overdubbing scores of musicians to make a full sound. The effect created a roar, which Spectre described as the Wangnerian approach to rock and roll. This style served to make Spectre even more famous in the music industry, and many iconic artists would be imitating this technique for future years, including the Beach Boys and Bruce Springsteen. But life wasn't unfolding exactly as Spectre had hoped. In 1966, he produced Ike and Tina Turner's single River Deep Mountain High. Spectre considered it his greatest production to date. While it placed at number 3 on the UK pop charts, it peaked at number 88 in the US. Embittered, Spectre went into seclusion for two years, during which time there were reports of strange, near-psychotic behavior. He did very little for the rest of the 1960s. In 1969, Spectre returned to work after he was asked to produce George Harrison and John Lennon's solo albums. After successful results, he was asked to turn a series of the Beatles recording sessions into a marketable album. The resulting work, Let It Be, topped both the US and UK charts and yielded the number one single, The Long and Winding Road. For the next several years, Spectre continued to produce successful solo albums for Lennon and Harrison. But as the 1970s progressed, Spectre's behavior vacillated between bizarre and reclusive. After several months of tension between Spectre and several members of the Beatles, the two parted company. In spite of his bizarre behavior, Spectre was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1989. He went on to write and produce music until 2003, when he was arrested in connection with the fatal shooting of actress Clarkson. After a panicked 911 call from Spectre's driver, police discovered Clarkson's body at the producer's mansion in Alhambra, California. She had been shot dead with a gunshot wound through the roof of her mouth. On November 20th, 2003, Spectre was indicted for Clarkson's murder. A year later, Spectre was ordered to stand trial in Los Angeles. During the proceedings, Spectre would arrive at court wearing various wigs, which became a hot topic on internet blogs. The case itself came to a head on September 26, 2007, but jurors could not reach a definite verdict. 
the murder case was declared a mistrial. Proceedings for a murder retrial began in October 2008, and Specter was found guilty of second-degree murder in 2009. He was sentenced to 19 years in North Kern State Prison in California. He was also ordered to pay $17,000 to Donna Clarkson, Clarkson's mother, for funeral expenses. Throughout his incarceration, Specter has not been allowed to wear any type of wig. In March 2013, Al Pacino played Spectre in the movie Phil Spectre about the famous record producer's murder trial and conviction. Thanks for watching.